Thank you for joining us for the first launch of 2022 and our 35th launch of Starlink to date. Chamber pressure is nominal. largest structural load that the vehicle will see throughout ascent. Now coming up, we will have three events happening in quick succession. That'll be main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO, stage separation, and second stage engine start one, or SES one. MECO is where all nine of the M1D engines shut off and slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. And back engine chill has started. And that's just a call out that the uh, engine chill on the second stage is getting ready uh, for ignition. Stage separation is where the first stage separates from the second stage. And with first stage returning back to Earth for landing while stage two continues on its journey with the third event, SES-1 or second stage engine start one. And that's where the MVAC engine ignites up and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to their targeted drop-off orbit. We're just about 10 seconds or so away from those three events and they will be followed by fairing deploys shortly after SES-1 as well. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. In recognition. Bearing separation confirmed. got some great views all four of those events that i mentioned miko stage separation ses1 and fairing deploy all visually confirmed on your screen now the fairing halves flying on today's mission are both flight proven with one half supporting its fifth flight and the other supporting its fourth flight on today's mission so we will be attempting to recover the halves again using our recovery vessel doug to hopefully support future missions and on your left-hand screen is a view of the first stage. You can see the grid fins have deployed there. Uh, those help guide the vehicle back to its landing zone. And on your right-hand screen is stage two. Now, as that heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the M1D engines will reignite, and this helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. And then the second burn is the landing burn. This is the single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down very rapidly in order to touch down on our drone ship. Again, a shortfall of gravitas today. Acquisition of signal on Bermuda. And that's just a call out that we have connected with a ground station on the second stage. 
And as you can see on your screen, we've got some incredible views today, a daytime launch uh, with Earth looking amazing in the background of both the first and second stage views. Now we're just under two minutes away from the entry burn starting up on the first stage. So for those of you who follow, we've got a nominal trajectory call out on second stage, which is great news. Now you'll notice that uh, the, there is soot on some of these rockets that we reuse. Um, and here's a quick explanation of why and how that soot forms. The rocket-grade kerosene, or RP-1, used to fuel a Falcon 9 is carbon-based. So when it burns uh, the fuel, it generates soot. Now, as the booster approaches landing, as you can see on your, your left-hand screen, it does a re-entry burn to slow the, the vehicle down prior to re-entering back into the Earth's atmosphere. Um, otherwise, the aerodynamic forces would rip it apart. So because the entry burn occurs with the engines first, the booster flies through its own plume. And that is what deposits the soot onto the rocket. And again, we're just about a minute away from that entry burn, so you will see uh, that live on your screen. Again, we've got some great views of our Starlink mission today. On your left-hand screen, that is the first stage booster making its way back to Earth. And on your right-hand screen is the second stage taking the satellites to their drop-off orbit. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn startup. And there you can visually see on your left-hand screen, the entry burn has begun on that first stage. This will last about 20 seconds or so long. Stage one entry burn shut down. Stage two FTS is saved. And that concludes the entry burn on the first stage. And really cool, you can kind of see the grid fins uh, as they rotate to help guide the vehicle back to its landing zone, which again today is a shortfall of Gravitas waiting for this booster in the Atlantic Ocean. Just under a minute away from the landing burn beginning on the first stage. Again, have some incredible views. This is, one is transonic. This is a view of the aft end of the second stage looking at the MVAC engine. So we are going to have landing burn coming up on first stage that will last about 20 seconds long and right when landing burn ends we should have a seco one or second engine cutoff one on second stage stage one landing burn startup there's that call out that the landing burn has begun on first stage And it looks like we have a live view Stage of the drone ship. Like deploy. And we have touchdown of Falcon 9. And through the cheering, we also heard that call out for Seco 1 which is great news. Our booster landing today marks our 101st overall successful recovery of a first stage and, and 134th successful flight of a Falcon 9 first stage. We also heard a nominal orbital insertion for stage two. So with that call out, Expected next up. Loss of signal. Okay.
Next up will be a payload deploy of our 49 Starlink satellites. Now today's launch marks the Expected first of signal Bermuda. Today's launch marks the first East Coast launch to a 53 degree south inclination. We're flying in the south degree trajectory to increase recovery weather availability for both the booster and fairing halves during the winter months. Now we are waiting for the deployment of our 49 Starlink satellites, which is scheduled to occur about six minutes from now. But as I mentioned, we won't have live audio or visual confirmation of payload deployment due to the lack of ground station coverage. We will acquire signal with our ground station in Kodiak, Alaska at T plus one hour and 20 minutes. So for those of you interested, we will keep the audio only countdown nets up on our YouTube channel and we'll confirm successful payload deployment on our social channels. Now with that, we'll be bringing our webcast to a close for today. Thank you for joining us for the first launch of 2022 and our 35th launch of Starlink to date. A big thank you to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. If you're interested in signing up for Starlink service, head over to Starlink.com. Thanks for watching.